Hello members, so I just wanted to um, do a overview of the training that uh, we did for the beginners in Aussie Explorer. So um, let's get started. So the first point will be the uh, basic configuration. So that's going up to the file here, down to configuration. And we're going to go through some of these tabs. Um, in the first section, uh, the main point I want to bring your attention to here is the map file path, which is um, C Aussie Explorer Maps, and the data file path. Self-explanatory, the maps go into maps, and data is everything else, waypoints, routes, um, all other types of information, track files, etc., all go into the data file. So this is where you will find that information. Under the maps section, a um, couple of points to change here. Make sure um, that the country or region is Australia SE. That's very important. That sets the orientation, etc. And that's all there. And this this will be well. Just make sure it's set to set to WGS84. It should be by default. Um, the images. Uh, it's best to keep the images with the maps, otherwise it gets confusing. Um, there's always two parts to a map file. So as you can see here, it's um, Aussie Explorer Maps. GPS, we won't worry about at this point. Um, won't worry about the, that. Objects. Now the track. Um, by default, this is set to red. Now on most maps, um, main roads are red, so obviously um, the track that uh, automatically creates will match the colour of the map, so that's no good. So I've set it to blue. The standard width is 2. I've set it to 4. Entirely optional, but um, just make sure it's a different colour than red. Um, that's about everything we need to do there, I think. And I'm actually moving the map. You can, you can change your pointer here depending on what you uh, want. This is the pointer that actually I like an arrow and I like it in um, lime green so it's uh, very obvious on the screen. This is the actual indicator of the GPS um, showing where you are on the map so that's my personal preference but again um, you can choose what you like. And I think that's it and we don't worry about that. Okay so we'll just save that away. Now next um, part we're just going to um, do some basic navigation there's an awful lot of icons on the screen. Um, in the basic course, um, we just covered basically loading. So we're going to um, load a map. So you hit on load and load the map. Uh, in your Aussie Explorer that you were given, you only have uh, two maps. So we um, were choosing the Margaret River. So we'll just open that up. Comes in at a very large scale. Um, we're just going to um, change that. This little box here quickly allows you to navigate to an area, that's the, the Margaret River area, and then we're going to just um, zoom out because it's a bit, a bit busy. So we'll run, because this is a very large map, um, you can zoom out at 50% and still, still see a very good scale. So we'll just use that. Now the next um, technique I wanted to show you was um, searching. Now on maps, um, you may want to find, need to find a town. So if you go up here to the search by name, and in this um, particular example, we're going to look for Dunsborough. So just type in D U N S, and that automatically filters it down to, as you can see, Dunsborough. Now to find Dunsborough on the map, a couple of things. Um, this pinpoints it exactly with a bullseye. This one will show all the maps on your system that ha have Dunsborough. So if we just click this, it shows us that we have three maps on our system that all cover um, Dunsborough. Now the reason that uh, these work is each of these maps are by HEMA and the indexes are all the same. That's why they work. A lot of other maps won't have the same indexes. So this is why I'm working with HEMA maps. So um, we'll choose the Margaret River one, which is our current one. And as you can see, it highlights Dunsborough. And just to show you the difference in scale, we're just, um, this is off the Atlas. Remember, we were talking about the Atlas, um, the HEMA four wheel 
um, drive atlas for WA. This is on pages 102 and 103. And if we just double click on that, um, that will show, also shows Dunsborough. But as you notice, the scale is different. And um, just note the yellow here. See these yellow tracks? These are tracks um, that are covered in the four drive atlas top 50 four wheel drive clubs, um, trips. All right, let's go back to the, the main map again. One of the other methods I use a lot to find information that I require and is it available on other maps is by right clicking on any map and find map cursor. What this will do is will search all the maps that you have and bring up a list of maps on your computer that have this detail. And as you can see, uh, because we're only working three maps again, it um, only comes up with that one. But just for an example, I will choose the wine region. And as you can see, it comes up. There's Dunsborough. And the scale, the scale is quite good on that one as well. But probably not quite as good. Oh, it's actually better, isn't it? So the wine region actually is even more detail than the Margaret River one. Now we're going to move on um, to waypoints. Um, I think we actually use the uh, Margaret River wine region here for this example because it will show very clearly the waypoints. So I'm just going to um, close the search screen by clicking the button up here, close. And I'm going to minimize this particular box. And you see these two arrows here? I just click there and it turns into a little narrow um, section which is much easier to uh, move on the map. Now what we're going to do here is look at some waypoints. Now um, we've uh, already um, decided we're going to do a trip down here so I'm going to show you the waypoints um, for the waypoints coming out of the four-wheel drives uh, week weekends out of Perth book trip number three called Cape to Cape. Now I've already loaded these in so we're going to uh, first of all we're going to go to view and we're going to show lists and this brings up the waypoint list. So here's our waypoint list. Just make that a little smaller. Like so and I'm going to load the waypoints from a file. Um, now you noticed um, we, we talked about this last night. It's very important to name your waypoints very clearly. So I'm looking for trip three out of the Cape to Cape four wheel drive weekends. So as you can see, I've made it very obvious which set of waypoints that I have. And as you can see here, there's a number of other trips which I've done, um, which um, clearly state where they're from and what trip it is. So we're going to select trip three and we're just going to open that. Now the first thing that you want to do when you're <coughs> checking waypoints is, is it on the map? So as we can see, we've got lots of yeses down here. So we know that all these waypoints we've just loaded are definitely on this map. And as you can see, this is a very good scale and it shows very clearly these waypoints. Now there's one point about waypoints I'd like to stress here is don't, don't overcook your waypoints. Um, put waypoints at very specific um, sections that you absolutely um, don't want to miss. So for instance, um, we've got this waypoint here, which is, is going to be the start of the trip. And then the next waypoint is just to make sure we just pick up this track off the main road. So that's something you don't want to miss. Now, as you can see, there's no other waypoints at all through here because um, this particular author covers all of this trip um, by <coughs> uh, track notes. But let's say, this, this, let's have a look at this, where the next one is. This is um, Waypoint 3, the naming of this is WPT stands for Waypoint Position and 3 represents the third trip in this particular book and A represents the first one and, and there we are 3B and we're looking for 3C. Now, as you can see 3C, we can't quite see this on our map. Two ways we can find it, we can move the map around like so or we can do something even quicker. We can actually find the waypoint by highlighting it and then clicking the bullseye. Now that immediately jumps to that next waypoint, as you can see there. Now, if we just bring it down, you see he's done an awful lot of um, track without doing another waypoint. And that's the trick, really, is um, 
you know, and, it, and it's basically this waypoint is this turn here, the next waypoint is this turn here, and the next point waypoint is this turn here, and so forth. So you get the idea, it, it's just make it very obvious that uh, this is somewhere you, you absolutely don't want to miss um, when you're doing the waypoints. The next section, um, I'm going to look at actually entering some of these waypoints in um, manually. So as you can see, I've done all these, but of course you need to learn how to do it. So the first thing we're going to do is just delete these from the list. So by clicking on the first shift key, clicking on the bottom, and then go delete. Now please remember that this is not actually deleting them out of your file. It's only deleting them out of the list. Very important. Okay, so you haven't just deleted all your waypoints. Now, um, to enter the waypoints, uh, now if I just bring in the um, slideshow that we had last night, let's bring that in. And that's the first one we were looking at. And if I just move down to, um, oops, remember that this is the <coughs> example of the um, trip that we're working out, and we were looking at the, the waypoints here. And if I just bring that up into a larger, if you recall those, just leave those onto the screen for a moment, and you can pause it. And um, what we're going to do now is I'm just going to move this to the side so I can look at it, and I'm going to enter in um, the first three waypoints, just like we did, and um, we'll give that a go. So let's just move this out of the way, so I can read it. Now, the first thing before we enter any waypoints is we've got to make sure that we've got um, the right zone. So up here, um, we've got, we click here, that enters positions in degrees and minutes, and clicking here uses a UTM grid. Now, you notice in our, um, I'll just bring them back again. You notice I mean, in our points, these are actually UTM grid, and they use a zone of 50H, if you recall that. Okay, let's move those out of the way again. Okay, so the first one uh, we're going to add in. And um, remember we did the waypoints, so caps lock on, WPT3A. That was the first waypoint. Now I must stress that um, you can name whatever you feel comfortable with, but um, try and be consistent with your naming when you do waypoints. Um, try and do one set of waypoints per trip, um, call it a descriptive name. It is possible to merge waypoints together, but that's um, only really necessary on a longer trip, and you may name them according to sections of the trip. But for now, we'll just keep it very simple. Um, WPT, um, trip number three, and first waypoint A, okay, as an example. Remember that zone, put in 50. So we're going to put in um, the easterly in this one, which is 324-060. Okay. Now the, the next one is kind of confusing because we're in the southern hemisphere and it calls it a northerly, but you've got to make sure you have the S. There's two choices here, which because we're in the southern hemisphere. And now we put in the northerly, so that's 6278. 623. Now the description, um, <clears throat> again, completely optional, but as this is the first waypoint, we could just put in um, start a trip, and you can have a symbol. The symbol um, is uh, within the waypoint list, not on the on the um, on the map. So we just save that one in. Now, if it comes, you know you're on the right map in this case, and if it comes up, yes, it's on the map, you know you've entered that incorrectly. And just to double check, because we know where the previous one was, we'll just use the um, bullseye, and that should jump us up to the, and it does. So we know that we're on the right track. Okay, so let's carry on with the next one. So we're going to go add again. Uh, this time, caps lock on, WPT3B, um, third track number 2 for B, so we're in zone 50. This time the easterly is um, 317-742. Again, southerly, northerly is uh, 
eight. Just about read that. <laughs> six, eight. Okay. Again, um, it's up to you if you want to put a description on. This this becomes useful um, when you're printing out the list. If I um, just quickly bring back in our trip again, and I move down to the next slide. Oh, that's not much good, is it? Anyway, th just a, this is all the lists of the waypoints, and this is where your descriptions will come out here. So the navigator could um, easily see what this waypoint actually meant on the map. So this is a good way um, to, to, to use it, if it was a bit larger, of course. Okay, let's just move it back out of the way. And we'll just save that. Okay, again, we've got it on the map, so probably on the right right track. And we'll just do one more. And that's um, caps lock on again, WP23C015. Easterly, <coughs> 317. One seven seven four two. Doesn't take long once you get into it. Um, six two eight five six two eight five oh six eight oh six eight. Again, descriptions optional and just say okay. So that didn't take long, did it? Um, and if we um, just minimise that, we, we'll be able to see our, our waypoints. So and we know the other one was down here a bit, wasn't it? Mm, goodness, somewhere around here. Let's do, let's do the easy method and go hit the, the target. Okay, all right. So there we go. There's the um, the waypoints, and um, that's how you do the data entry. And as we can see, we actually made an error in our entry. As you can see, I copied the two, but this gives me the opportunity to show you how to edit your waypoint if you made a mistake. So you simply highlight the waypoint in question and you hit the edit button and up it pops. So what I did wrong there, I'm sure you were watching, um, I put in the wrong northerly because it's a bit hard to read on my list but let's try that again. should be 6257, 6257, 663. Yep. Okay, let's try that. Okay, that's better. All right, so there you go. So that's how you actually edit a waypoint as well. So I made that mistake deliberately, really. Okay, that covers um, our entering it in manually. Let me just delete these again and bring in the, the other set. And then we can just have a look. If we zoom out, what they all look like. So I'll just delete those. And we'll load in our waypoints again and we'll load. Uh, load the waypoints from file and we'll just bring in the cape to cape there they go and if I just minimize that up and we'll just zoom out just a little bit more in fact what we'll do is change maps so remember right click um, find map with cursor and just a quick note here the, the one at the top has the highest resolution the more detail and so on. So we're going to pick the least detail, that therefore we can zoom out the furthest in this particular instance. So I'm just choose this one. And as we can see now, so we, we can see very clearly all our waypoints for this particular trip. And there we go. Easy as that. So now it's up to you to go out and uh, try these chip, try these trips. And um, that's all for now. Thanks for listening.